Hi, I'm Dan Richardson from IR3 Creative Engineering, and I'm here today with another IR3 Creative How-To. Today, we're going to be walking you through how to put together your Modulox gearbox. And for today's example, we'll be using the Modulox lunchbox, which is available now on andymark.com. Today's tools will include a standard Allen key set and a 3 8 inch open wrench. But we're going to go ahead and use T-handles. Now, every Modulox kit comes with standard components. And let's go ahead and walk through what those names are now. You have a bearing block, a back block, a through block, a motor receiver, standard hardware and spacers, cluster shaft, an output shaft, cluster gears, and output gears, a hex shaft collar, and Modulox standard slot support plate. The sim motor is not included. With the Modulox modular gearbox system, there are limitless opportunities and countless gear ratios with multiple gearbox configurations. But today, I'm going to show you one of the standard configurations available with our lunchbox kit. We're going to go ahead and start by deciding what we're going to use for our gear ratio. So for this setup, we're going to use a 14 tooth sim gear, mated with a 50 tooth cluster gear, paired with a 14 tooth cluster gear, and a 56 tooth output gear, making for a total gear ratio of 14.3 to 1. So we're going to start by taking our sim motor, 5 16 steel washers, placing them on the sim shaft to space our 14 tooth sim gear away from the motor face. We are then going to align the machine, screw, or machine keys and place our key into sim gear. We're going to finish it off by taking our retainer clip and pushing it on to the sim shaft. But here's a new neat trick for you. By taking one of the cluster gears, preferably the 50 tooth, we can place that around the retainer clip and press firmly until the retainer clip is firm against the sim gear. If you're having any issues, you can use a rubber mallet to gently tap and get that retainer clip on. The next step is we'll take one of our SIM receiver motor plates, lining that up with the threaded shaft, or I'm sorry, with the threaded holes, placing one of our standard lunchbox plates over top, and followed up by the last inside motor receiver plate. Using the larger hardware in the kit, we're going to gently thumb tighten or hand tighten down the screws. It should be able to slide in and out of place in this configuration. The next step is to take a back block and slide it underneath the sim in between the standard plate followed by one of these smaller bearing blocks. These are 3 8 inch hex bore. Again, followed by placing the smaller of the hardware, the 632 screws, into the holes. Now for this configuration, we'll only be able to use two of the fasteners. If you need a larger output torque capability, you can countersink these holes and use countersunk hardware to use all four fasteners. The next step would be to take our last back block and our last bearing block on that plate and put them into place. So now that we have the one, so, uh, one plate installed, we're going to go ahead and preempt the next part by installing the bearing blocks in to the opposing plate.
Again, with a small bearing block and a back block, the 3 8 inch hex bore and a back. Only hand tightening those screws so that we can slide that bearing block in and out of place as needed. And then we're going to use a half inch bearing block, the larger of the pair, with a through block. And this is going to be for our through, uh, our through shaft. And this will be the output shaft of the assembly. Again, hand tightening. You should have, in this configuration, two remaining bolts. These can be used as spares, or in a larger gear off the sim, you'll need those to tighten that down, that first bearing block down. So now that we have both of those plates fully together, what we're going to do is start assembling the actual gears. First step we'll need to do is take our cluster shaft and put it into our 3 8 inch bearing block. And we're going to go ahead and follow that up by the 50 tooth cluster gear. Now this is a, a, a key point to the assembly of the gearboxes. We need to put the chamfered edge against the bearing block. So there's a slightly raised edge and we need to make sure that that is mating with the bearing block because that's going to allow us to have a more frictionless run at the end. We're going to gently place that against that first sim gear. The next step is we're going to take two plastic, bear, or plastic washers and place them in between what will be our next gear, our next cluster gear, and that first 52, followed up by the 14 tooth cluster gear. Again, making sure we put the chamfered side towards what will be the bearing block. The last step will be taking that output shaft, putting it into the half inch bearing block, and taking our shaft collar, sliding that into place, and our 56 tooth output gear, sliding that on and meshing that against the 14 tooth cluster gear. We're now going to want to slide in that first plate. Aligning all the gears and all the shafts to those hex broached bearings. We will now take our plate spacers and one at a time begin to assemble the final lunchbox. Keep in mind, your kit comes with nylon lock washers, or lock nuts. But if you do not want this to be your final assembly, you can use any standard nut to put this together. Once you have that snugged into place, we're going to go ahead and try to get our, our gear mesh correct. So we don't want our gear mesh overly tightened. We don't want it overly loose. This is why we left all those bearing blocks loose to slide in and out of place. A good kind of standard would be to gently apply some force on each edge of the bearing block try to squarely squeeze that bearing or that gear into place. Once you have what you feel to be a good mesh, go ahead and thumb tighten all those screws down. This should make it so that the blocks will not slide in and out of place. It's not our final tighten, we'll still need to do one more. Now doing with the, the, uh, the last gear stage, do the same. Once you get those bearing blocks tightened down, try to give the gearbox a spin. If you feel a lot of chatter, make sure the gears are meshing appropriately. If you hear a large ring, it may mean the gears are not tight enough. Once you have the gears correctly spaced and the mesh is appropriate, you can go ahead and do your final tightening. And this is the first time we get to use our tools.
Now, if this were your final configuration, please remember to use Loctite or check the bolts frequently because they may loosen with vibration. Well, thanks for watching this IR3 Creative Engineering how-to video. If you'd like more information on Modulox, please go to modulox.com or andymark.com. If you'd like more information about IR3 Creative, please go to ir3creative.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.